or in the middle of the move. Um, that's how I do it with some little wheels and to level it or to c overcome all the obstacles I adjust the tire pressure so that makes it easy to move and at the back end we just got the, the engine crane headstock is almost in so I need, need to reset my my rope I'm gonna use one of these cheapo electric winches here makes life a lot easier and uh, the lawnmower battery all right yeah. look how easy it moves here really easy to move on this wheels because my ground is, is so uneven I was a bit on an angle as well so it worked okay so far the heaviest part is almost in so let's carry on get it in because it's damp outside I need to wipe it down because everything is wet all right I'm gonna reset my my rope and uh, I'll carry on so we finally made it into the workshop gave it a good oil and uh, I can measure some sagging on the bed if we move along here you can see it's moving I don't know if it's the tailstock uh, way as well I don't know we need to figure out what it is it's sort of expected I'm not too worried the machine feels tight you can move back and forth it doesn't stick uh, and it feels really tight so we'll see uh, we're gonna fit the plug and uh, fire it up I hold everything I could find so we'll see what works and what doesn't all right so we got it running I just fitted that monster chuck here my back hurts now I I think I need a little bit of a crane here. So it's just uh, freaking heavy. All right, let's spin that thing. I need to sort that belt the problem with the belt is uh, if I'm on the larger pulley it always comes off when I'm released here yeah. I felt that rear oiler it doesn't drop down so and it feels smooth so there is some binding when he was standing for a while but I checked the spindle there is no run out or there's no play in the spindle at least not vertical and uh, feed works cross and longitudinal feed um, half nut works I don't know how it looks like all the gears work let's start it again Sample feed, you know, it's cross feed. Well, I was 
comes off here. I think it's not spliced very well. Maybe I turn it around. I know it's a bit dark, but uh, I don't have lights here. The uh, the splice is not straight, so it pushes the belt of the bottom pulley when I release it. Here we have the drive system with the pulleys. There's one belt missing of these V belts, and that motor looks very original. It's good. Hasn't got ball bearings. It's got plain bearings. Uh, by the look at it, it's it's most likely original. So I like that. Certainly not inverterated, but we'll see what we can do with that. We will retain it for sure. It's just another nice feature of that machine. So that's feed reverse, that's working as well. That's working. The gear train on the back end is pretty noisy. It's getting quiet. So <clears throat> let's put a tool holder on, make some test cuts, and see how it looks like. I still have it on the wheels, but there is uh, some wood underneath. So I just release the tire pressure, and it sits on the wood. I'm pretty happy with the machine. It's uh, in good nick, actually, for that age. Uh, not much paint left and it's been painted a few times apparently not the original paint because behind that cover down there there is a slightly different gray so you're gonna go into finer details a few measurements as soon as I'm familiar with the whole machine um, this I could see here there's a lot of grime coming out of the um, I, I oiled the waste, but there is a lot of garbage or grime inside, so I might need to take the saddle off. Well, we finally found something which is not so nice. There is a fair amount of play on the cross light, but the the screw itself has play as well. It's the same on the on the top slide then. The whole lead screw has play. Maybe there is a bearing. I need to look into that. This, but it's not just that. It's it's about half of it. Yeah, about half of it is the spindle bear, or the, the about half of it is the lead screw bearing, and the other half is probably the nut. There is quite a bit of play, and it's very light actually. The machine was well oiled, but, but it was all grimy. Cross light needs attention. 
tailstock nut, if I lock the tailstock, it's got about 45 degrees play. So it's not new anyway, and it's very light. It spins very light, but uh, I oiled everything, so that looks okay so far. Uh, not much play in the, the column, so it looks good so far. Yeah, we carry on searching. So we checked up a piece of round stock and if we check the spindle it is approximately uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 40 thousandths or four hundredths of a millimeter. I think this is the normal bearing play. This is a thousand indicator, I don't know if it's visible. A bit dark here uh, so this is the, the spindle play here that looks good so far as good as we can so we just take a test cut and see how it cuts This is five thousandths of a millimeter. I'm happy with that. So let's take a cut. Uh, we'll turn that down and come back. We need to see how it, how it works. Yeah, it's as expected. I'm getting harmonics here because the top slide has a bit of play. You can feel it's it's rattling. And uh, I think the the play in the in the cross light doesn't really help either. It's pretty hard material, but uh, it shouldn't do it. Um, maybe it's all together. It's a bit of spindle play and, and top slide play. The the feet looks quite stiff. There's I don't believe that's the issue. It doesn't matter if I hand feed or if I uh, auto feed. It, it's just getting harmonic. So I tried different speeds. Maybe I need to use another tool, but that's the only one I had in this size. Uh, looking for some carbide inserts. I must have some. I just put them away because I didn't have a light. Where I could use such big tooling. All right, I think we call it a day. It's late already. The machine is complete. I couldn't see any bolts missing. Uh, I just left the cover off. I need to grease those gear a little bit because they're rattling. But uh, apart from that, no, yeah, no missing nuts and bolts. Everything looks okay so far, apart from the issue with the cross and top slide with the play in the nuts, or with the play in total, we need to figure out what that is. It's making chips, we need to address the play, top and cross slide, uh, and need to check the gips, I don't know, the gips screws are pretty loose, I don't know why, that, why that's the case. Maybe I just take it off and look at the spindle nuts. A uh, little bit of work to do, but uh, it's generally usable. Maybe not with stick out. So I'm pretty sure if I use a a center, it's fine. But I just wanted to cut a bar and see how round it is. But uh, it's un unbelievable. Look at this. What harmonics we're getting here. Maybe that tool holder is. I don't like those. I'm a, I prefer the multifix. It's just more rigid. But that's what it came with. So we're gonna live with that for now. All right. Maybe we're gonna do some brake drums tomorrow. I've got some uh, brake drums from my trailer which I need to machine. Let's try that. 
jug looks pretty good. It's a bit stiff, but uh, I think it hasn't seen a lot of work. Uh, because most people don't like independent jugs. I just like it because you just tell your stuff in as you want it. And it takes a bit longer, but you get it pretty dead accurate. All right, that's it from the South Bend part two. We're gonna continue that as we go along with the project. Thanks for watching, until next time. Mm -hmm.